When you get the opportunity to potentially meet with a patient, inform them about their diagnosis and put together a plan and then hopefully send them back to their livelihood and give them an important part of their life back, there's really no better feeling, particularly if uh, they tell you at the end of their consultation or maybe even at some point in their treatment journey, you really took the time to explain this well. I had a lot of fears. I had a lot of things that I didn't understand. When I heard, heard the word cancer, I was terrified and I was sort of lost. And after meeting with you, I felt like I had the information to move forward with my life. There's really no better feeling than that. Oftentimes when I'm meeting patients, it's one of the most difficult days of their life. They've just received a diagnosis of cancer. Oftentimes there's a big gap between the things that they need to know and what they know presently. And so one of the first things that I try to do is, is assess their level of understanding about their diagnosis, take an inventory of what they've been told and, and really understand what informational gaps we need to fill in. And then really another, I think, crucial part of that first consultation is actually learning about the patient, who they are, where they're from, who's important in their life, what their values are, um, and a little bit of back, about their background because I think that has a huge influence on the plan that we'll ultimately put together together. You know, one thing that makes up a significant component of my practice is actually second opinions, where people have seen a doctor somewhere else with whom they have a good rapport, and they come to Siteman just because they want to know, you know, am I getting the standard of care? Um, are there clinical trials available? Is there something new or cutting edge or some other nuance of their care that maybe would benefit from, from review? And so I'm always happy to see patients in that context. And oftentimes the, the outcome of those conversations is that I tell the patient, hey, your local physician has put a great plan together and if you have a good rapport and you trust them, then move forward. But if not, we're happy to assume your care from here and, and here are the different steps that we could take to move forward. One of the things about Siteman that I think as a patient is maybe a little bit hard to discern unless you're within the realm of cancer is that it's what's called a comprehensive cancer center. And really that's the highest rating of accreditation for excellence for a cancer center. And that means a couple of things. It means it usually has the most experienced and the best trained physicians. We have a basic science and translational uh, research component where we have nationally and internationally funded researchers who are looking for the next best therapies. And really most importantly for patients is we have access to things like clinical trials where patients may be exposed to the current standard of care plus what is going to be the next groundbreaking discovery or treatment within their cancer. When you come to a large academic center is that you get treatment with the academic medical team, which, which can be big and imposing. There's a lot of people involved. We have residents and fellows and um, clinical nurse practitioners and lots of people other than just the surgeon who are responsible for delivering your care. And the thing that I would assure you is these are people that that really have singular focus on improving your outcome. And they wouldn't be here if they didn't want to be part of a high functioning team. And so even though it may be intimidating to meet lots of people while you're in the hospital or around the time you have surgery, these are people that all have the same goal, which is to help you. There's several studies that have shown specifically in cancer care that when cases, particularly complex cases, are discussed in a multidisciplinary fashion, meaning there's other specialists besides the diagnosing and treating doctor who are weighing in, the final plan changes about 40% of the time. And it's not just that the plan changes, but when you follow those outcomes, we find that, that actually overall survival from cancer improves through review with multidisciplinary teams. So I always encourage patients, look, if, if the opinion or the treatment plan that I'm recommending to you does not seem like something you're comfortable with, I'm happy for you to see another specialist. I'm happy to recommend other colleagues in my department. I'm happy to recommend other specialists who treat this sort of cancer who may not be surgeons, because I think there's never anything wrong with getting more information, particularly since it may have a, a meaningful impact on your treatment. I think one of the exciting things in our field is that we truly are moving to an era of personalized medicine. In many of the cancers that I treat, we can now take either tissue from diagnosis, um, from biopsies, or from the actual surgical specimen if we remove a tumor, and do genetic testing and see are there specific medications that may actually work better for your cancer better than other options. And so the ability to tailor our treatment beyond surgery, so things like immunotherapy and chemotherapy, gene therapy, tumor vaccines, all of these things that are emerging to the specific patient and, and their actual tumor biology is I think one of the most exciting things in our field. One of my dad's closest friends growing up had testicular cancer, 
um, in his mid 40s around the time that Lance Armstrong also had testis cancer. And so to see personally what he went through with his treatment and then now the fact that, you know, 25 years later, he's still cured with no evidence of disease was really uh, encouraging for me that, you know what, there are surgeons who can treat patients and impose a cure. You know, my, my dad's friend has had a whole nother lifetime of experiences because of that successful cancer care. And so that, that story personally inspires me to try to do the same thing for, for people in my practice.